let's continue the story, finish up the one variable implicit as from seen from the multivariable perspective, and then go to a fully multivariable example. So we've got this situation where we've got um, big F, we're thinking of our constraint set, our um, implicitly defined equation or curve as the level set of big F, and we want to understand the derivative of the implicitly defined but not explicitly found function little f, where it, so y is going to be little f of x. So we're about to solve for this. Here's where we got to. It's easy to solve. You get minus fx over fy in that notation, or minus dz by dx over dz by dy. So um, remember the perspective here. What we're doing is switching between two perspectives. The, the big Fx and the big Fy perspective, or the dz dx dz dy perspective, the partials, are imagining that we can walk anywhere. We're free to walk anywhere in the plane. And in particular, we're free to go from our point and walk purely in the x direction, which measures this guy, or purely in the y direction, which measures this guy. And here's the cool thing. We're not, we, the, what we're most interested in is not really being able to walk anywhere in the plane. We want to know how we have to walk if we're constrained to lie on the, um, on this implicitly defined curve, the level set. So what we do is we imagine, like we're an ant trapped on that thing, but we imagine we could break free and be a bu beautiful butterfly or something and fly straight in this direction, straight in this direction, and see what the rates of change would be. What that's going to tell us is how to play off those rates of change so that we get rate of change zero. Because that's the key thing, is we want to know what's the relationship that y and f of, little f of x have to have, at least in terms of their derivatives, um, so that we don't get any change in the big F function. So for example, if big F of xy is x squared plus y squared minus 1, then big F x is 2x. And at the point in question, I think I used three, three fifths, four fifths, yeah. This is going to be six fifths. Big F Y is two Y, which is going to be eight fifths. And then the deri the ratio here is going to be minus six eighths or minus three fourths. So we're saying that if we went in this direction, we'd have a certain rate of change. If we went in this direction, we'd have a certain rate of change. In particular, they'd both be positive. So I'd better not go both in the x direction and the y direction positively, because that would give me certainly a rate of a, a, a non-zero rate of change. So I say, ooh, let's go with a negative slope. So that's either we go to the right and down, so we're going to get an increase coming from the fact that we're moving in the positive x direction, but canceled out exactly by the decrease by moving against the y direction. Or we go to the left and up, which is going to give us a negative contribution from the fact that we're moving x negatively, but a positive contribution here. We go at exactly the right slope to cancel these contributions out. That's what's saying. Here's the contribution we're going to get by, by changing x. Here's the indirect contribution we get by changing y. And we want them to cancel out to be 0, because this is a level set. Now, one interesting thing about that cancellation is, um, if you look at this notation, it's a good illustration of the pros and cons of the Leibniz notation for derivatives with the d by d notation. It kind of seems like you, ju you could just cancel the dz's here, and then the dy would flip up, and you get dy dx. Oh, so that could you could easily convince somebody by just say, oh, it's just like canceling fractions, that um, this would work with a plus sign in front of it, without the minus sign. But that minus sign is really there. It's really, it's really crucially there. So it is a limitation of this, of this notation. It, it suggests the right formula, but it crucially misses a very, very big piece of it. Okay. Um, so let's look. I want to start the next example. I don't want to go too far because my screencaster is not allowing me to do long videos right now for some reason. Disk space errors. Okay. So let's look at a 3D example. Instead of a curve in two dimensions, let's look at a surface. Now I'm gonna, not going to try to do an accurate sketch. I'll, I'll do a specific numerical or a algebraic example. But here's the idea. I've got some surface that's defined by one equation and three variables. Let's say equals 0. It's really just in short and central that that's a constant, but 0 is just simpler. OK. So for example, it could be. Let's take this equation, yz equals ln of x plus z. That is an one equation in three variables. And if we just move everything on one side, 
it's not hard to express it as a level set. You can always express something as a level set of a function on your space just by moving everything to one side. Okay, and I'd like to know. I'd like to calculate dz dx at some point x y z. Okay, so here's this implicitly defined surface. I want to know if I move along that surface just in the x direction, then what is the the slope of that? What is the the dz dx? Okay, so this is the one variable up kind of version. So now we have three variables, um, and I want to think of z as implicitly defined in terms of x and y. Well, of course, the simplest thing would be, why don't I just solve? Okay, well, z is going to be ln of x plus z over y. Oh, that's got a z in it. Darn it, we haven't isolated the z. Okay, well, let's move everything over. Uh, oh, yeah, take e to both sides. Okay, so z is, oh, wait a minute. Oh shoot, I've got a z in there still. The truth is that this is a great example of a kind of equation you could never solve explicitly algebraically for z. You can't take a z that's outside an ln and inside an ln in the same equation, or outside an e and inside an e, and isolate the z. There's no algebra you can invent that will do that with you know the ordinary algebraic functions, or even transcendental functions like e's. Okay, so we it's hopeless to try to do that explicitly, and so this is a great case where we want to do um, implicit differentiation. Let me emphasize the perspective, the two perspectives, and then in the next video I'll talk about the calculation. It's going to be very similar. There's these two perspectives. One is where I think of x, y, and z on, all on the same footing. That's the big F perspective, where I could in principle move purely in the x direction without staying on the surface, purely in the y direction, purely in the z direction. And um, that's the sort of, the, I would say, the big F perspective. The perspective, the other perspective, is that secretly, if I could solve this, well, in principle, there is something to be solved. It's just how the algebra doesn't work. Z is a function little f of x and y, where z is special. It's the output, and x and y are treated as the inputs. It's very similar. It's just one level up from what we were doing before. Essentially, what we're going to see is y is going to kind of come along for the ride here. We don't. We could actually almost derive this from the one variable version, but it's nicer to not. Um, to kind of see it in general. So that's what we'll do in the next video.